Why do you have to oppress women? How come you have to kill all the Jews and Christians? Why is your religion so violent? Hmm? So what do you say? Has anybody ever sat with you and showed you the right way to respond to this? Because we have the best example on earth of how to reply to those types of harsh attacks. And who am I talking about? Some of the or some of No doubt about it. Did he have a problem? Every single day they give him a problem. The Qurayshi tribe, his own relatives, man. Coming at him. And by the way, they weren't just coming up and saying things to hurt his feelings. They were hurting the Muslims physically. True or false? How many of you know about the occasion when he and Abu Bakr were both right by the Kaaba? And the Quraysh nearly beat them to death. They had to haul him home, drag him home. And Abu Bakr nearly died. But when he came to, all he could worry about was the Prophet And he wasn't going to relax until he knew Rasul was okay. Remember the story? They nearly beat him to death. Okay, so what happened? So the Prophet ﷺ said, okay, okay, everybody tonight, get your weapons and sneak up on them, and we're going to go in and blow them up, and nope. Nope. That was still in the early years. That was in Mecca. They had no commandment. And the Prophet ﷺ didn't make up the religion. It has to come from Allah. And without a commandment to do it, they can't do it. All they can do is self-defense, which, of course, anybody can do that. When the orders for battle came, they were very clear. And even today in the Geneva Convention, they cannot match, they can't touch the laws and rules for battle that Islam has. Can't even get close. It's too beautiful. First, you have to have the circumstance that Allah is describing in the Quran. It can't be that you're going out here fighting for money. <coughs> There's no such thing as being mercenaries in Islam. You can't fight for money. They can. Right now in the United States, we have a huge number of people being trained in private camps, private businesses, training people to be mercenaries, and then renting them out to the United States to the tune of over $100,000 a month each. Have you heard about it? Yes. You're looking at me like you got no clue what I'm talking about. It's called Blackwater. That's one of them. One of six of the major ones. And the guy that runs it is a personal friend of Mr. B's. Yeah, take care of your buddies. Those are mercenaries. We can't do that. Kill for money. You can't do it. Property, same thing. No. Nope. And again, I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about self-defense. That everybody always has the right to self-defense. That's common sense. But when it comes to organizing and going in battle, there's a name for it in Arabic. Do you know what it is? What is it? You guys are freezing up on me, man. <laughs> what, are you afraid of the secret cameras in here or something? <laughs> Somebody said, Sheikh, is it the J word? <laughs> no, it's not the J word. <laughs> the word actually has the reference to, to killing. It's called kital, from kittle. And this is the word Allah is using in the Quran. But it means to engage in a type of fight that can wind up in death. In English it has the word mortal combat. And this is what's mentioned in Quran. But there are so many things that have to be in place. And it has to be followed a certain way. That's why 
the Prophet ﷺ never allowed anybody to do this until they had it from Allah and how to do it and when to do it and most important of all when not to do it they use the term in the translators they use this in verse 190 of Surah Baqarah they use the term in English fight but more appropriately it should be combat because fighting you imagine somebody standing there going Tuh. No, it's more like tuk, 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 tuk. you know. This is a lot closer. Fight them when they fight you, but stop if they stop. Otherwise, you're the aggressor, and verily Allah doesn't love the aggressors. Verse 191 next says, him Now this is the imperative, like Quran. Quran is the word, it's a noun. Qari, one who recites. Ekara, you recite. That's the imperative of the word. So, waqtuluhum, aqtuluhum, because wa just means and, says, kill them, but it's in combat. So, it's the same word again. Killing combat or mortal combat. Wherever you find them, Turn them out from where they turned you out. Now, what did that mean? That was specific, wasn't it? They never read the rest of that verse, by the way, because right away the people would be going, who got turned out? What was that all about? So they just stopped short. And that's another kind of lying, is to take part of a verse and just show that. And in, that, in actuality, it was talking specifically about when they go for Hajj. If you go back to verse... 189 you can see that there are three things that are being asked to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam yes they're asking you that's how the verse starts out about such things as the moons and this is to know when to do Hajj and entering your house by the wrong doors and that's superstition don't do that and then the subject of when are we ever going to get to fight I mean you know 13 years and we've just been hassled to death. All we want to do is go do Hajj. Hassled to death. All we want to do is go do Hajj. So this is when it was pertaining to that and going back to the place which was their own land, their own homes, their own families, their own property. And they were uh, being told now by Allah, yes, you can go back and if they fight you, you can fight them. And you can even turn them back out of the property they stole from you and take your land back. But it has these conditions to go with it because before that they never had any of the conditions. Arabs before Islam came were very tribal and feudal. Meaning that they would just go after it and go after it and kill and kill and kill with no limits. Have you heard about the battle? the feud actually that they had over a camel race there was a big camel race and the winner of the the race a certain camel another boy is jealous so he picks up a rock and throws it and kills the camel so they killed the boy so those people killed their boy and then they started killing each other and you know how long it went 40 years to the extent that people couldn't remember what the battle was about anymore. Why are we killing these people? Over a stupid camel race. Now aren't you glad we don't have camel races anymore? <coughs> of course we do have football. Oops. <laughs> it gets pretty rough too, doesn't it? But you can see, if you put it in context, this is nothing like what the people are trying to claim Islam is saying. There's nothing like that. Especially because it has the warning marks in there. Stop if they stop. And it repeats that again, even after this thing about turning them out and everything. But still, if they stop, it's up to Allah. It's back to Allah again. Notice how many times when you're dealing with your enemies, even if it's in your house, you've got a problem with your wife, but once they stop, back off. And don't keep jamming it in their face. That's in Surah An-Nisa. It doesn't say it like that in, in Arabic, but I'm trying to give you the essence of what it's telling you about. 
For sure, the more you study Islam in Arabic, and the more you understand how these things all fit together, there's no way you'd ever let anybody convince you that there's a single thing wrong with Islam. There's a lot wrong with some Muslims, no doubt. And I'll put myself in that category. But there's nothing wrong with Islam. Islam is perfect. Because Islam describes a relationship between us and our Lord. Islam is based on those words. You've heard me say it. If you know any of our programs, I say it in every program. Islam is surrender, submission, obedience, sincerity, and peace. And when those five things are together, and you're having this relationship with your Lord, that's the best relationship there is. He's the boss, and you're not. And as long as we adhere to this relationship with our Lord, doing what He wants us to do on His terms, we're going to be okay. But now, how do I respond when these guys come up to me? And I'm going to leave you with this and let you think about it. It doesn't matter how they attack you. It doesn't matter what they say or how they do it. Train yourself. You can go in front of the mirror so you can do this. So that you can be like the companions of Rasul Sallallahu and how they had to respond in those early years, especially before the verses came. Because you, by the way, you, you, can't, you cannot get together and get a little group and go out here and do stuff like that today. This, that's not Islam. It has to be under authority. We don't have authority. You cannot do that. Okay? You are being tested. And this is your test. Just as it was for many of the Sahabi. Somebody come to you and insult you, say something bad, like some of the things I mentioned. I'm going to throw another one out. How come you guys worship a black box in the desert and kiss the ground five times a day? <coughs> Thank you for asking me about my religion. <laughs> Try it. Thank you for asking me about my religion. Thank you for asking me about my religion. Hey. How come your wife got that rag on her head? Thank you for asking me about my religion. In my case, how come you look like Santa Claus? Thank you for asking me about my religion and you're getting nothing for Christmas. <laughs> but seriously, seriously, you just be nice and tell them thank you. Because guess what? Now he's stuck. Because you acted like you didn't know it was an insult. And only the worst of the worst of the drunks is going to persist after that. He'll be like, uh, uh, well, uh, <clears throat> would you like to have the answer to your question? Would you like to sit down and have coffee? We can talk. Uh, uh, well, uh, uh, oh, can I get your email? I'll send you something or... Phone number, we can talk. Maybe you're in a hurry or something. Uh, 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 uh. It works. It's perfect. Because they didn't come to really ask you. I told you, this is not about clearing up misconceptions. This is about the ones who came to attack. Now, some of them do it out of ignorance. There's no doubt about that. Because they picked it up from people who are trying to program them to do this stuff. But some of them are exactly that. In any case... When you say, thank you for asking me about my religion, and you smile, they're going to go, okay, 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 that's it. That's it. I'm out of here. And that's good. That's really good. But when it comes to the issue, if you happen to know the answer, the proper answer, you'd be surprised how many times it turns the whole thing around. Just turns it upside down in the other way. Here's one for you. When they ask you, how come a man can have four wives, but a woman can't have four husbands? Thank you for asking me about my religion. In Islam, there are two important things. I always say this. First is the truth, meaning that I have to say the truth or I can go to hell. The second thing is the proof. Even if I make a mistake, you can find it out real easy because everything of Islam, there's only one version. There's only one version of Quran. There's only one version of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's all one. So it's real easy. 